Hey guys, welcome back to your Daily Dose of Rocket League. Today I'm going to be doing something that you guys have been asking for me to do for quite a while, and I haven't really got around to doing it until today. I just streamed for the last two and a half hours, and I recorded an entire run through making a map from start to finish. So I went from this to this. So before we get into the video, hope you guys enjoy the daily content. If you do enjoy the daily content and haven't subscribed yet, please feel free to do so. We're actually almost at 200,000 subscribers, which is insane. I really appreciate it, guys. Really appreciate the support. Uh, let me know what you guys want to see next on this channel. Uh, what kind of game modes or maps you want to see. I've got about like 10 or 11 in the making. Just chipping away at them as I can. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. Hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> All right, so I have a default template that I usually use of my standard maps. And here you can see it here. I loaded it up immediately and got rid of the floor. And uh, I can start here from basically any map that I want to use a standard map. I can start creating stuff with other meshes. So what I wanted to do today uh, was I streamed the entire map making process. It took about two hours and I started to make floors lava. Now, if anyone's seen the Rocket League Sumo map, uh, you'll know that it's basically a survival kind of uh, game mode where you're trying to bump each other off of the the floor uh, and then once you fall off the map then you become one of the players that sit in the outside pillars so i tried to make a floor as lava map with uh basically lava in the middle of the field but then also like different platforms you can jump for between i just did a strategy there which i usually do is i take two meshes and move them on a grid and then what i can do is change the scale of them to fit that exact grid size and then i can just scale them around so i move them up to the right height above the border of the rocket league uh banners there uh, and I took the bleachers that I have from the files inside Rocket League and I started setting up the platforms for the outside. Uh, you'll see that later down the road I actually change these platforms around and get rid of the corners uh, in order to put the platforms for where you sit if you've been taken out of the game. So, so far I basically just put lava textures around the outside. Nothing really too special. I'm lining them up here in the middle and uh, then I'm going to mirror them over the other side and put them around the outside of every corner of the map. Uh, as you can see, it's really helpful to have like a default standard template for these Rocket League maps because like, I can just use the standard field, which is what Rocket League, like Psyonix does. They basically just have a standard map. They change the floor texture a little bit, um, you know, add the outsides, which is what I'm doing here, here. So I took some stones from another map I'm working on right now, and I took the bridges from that map as well. I'm going to create a volcano bridge standard map in the future. So I have this bridge that has like all jagged rocks and stuff. Uh, I just thought I'd place two of them on the edges. And uh, right now what I'm doing, I think I'm loading up the other map. Yeah, so I loaded up a different map and grabbed this this mesh that I've used in my water polo map and a few others. Uh, it's originally from water polo that GLH, GLH made. And now I'm just filling in the lava between all of the outside edges of the mesh. And then I'm just putting the bridge where I want to and scaling it up to the right size. So that way it looks really nice. Then I moved the sun into the right spot. Uh, what else did I do here? Okay, so then I didn't really like the texture on the stone here. So I think what I do is I try to look for one that worked, but I found that it wouldn't wouldn't work that well. This is a 1024 by 1024 rock image here. So I actually expanded out to 4096 by 4096 in Photoshop. And then what I do here is I use this website, uh, which basically take and take images and uh, change it into a bump map or normal map, they call it. Uh, so that way you can get like more light shining off it properly. So then I re-imported that and used that on the, the rock instead. But then I realized that the normal texture was way too strong. And as you can see, the, see, the importing takes a long time. Uh, sometimes it crashes, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so I realized the strength was too strong. I put the normal back down. And then I try re-importing re again. Once that's done, it's uh, it looks pretty good to me. Uh, once you rebuild the lighting, it does change a lot. So you'll have to see what it looks like after the, the lighting is recompiled. But yeah, so just filling in the gaps here. Since I did stream this live, there are a few breaks I took, but since I did speed this up 10 times speed, it should hopefully not be too bad. I'd end up playing Minesweeper at some point. I moved the, the map into the middle here, selected everything, and made sure it was more centered with the, the map, and then I fixed the bridges up. Next, I picked a texture I liked on it, uh, which a lot of this is reused from my Fire and Ice Temple. Uh, as you can see, it's the same stone texture as some of the outside of the map, which I haven't uploaded to the workshop yet, by the way, but I haven't finished it. Uh, I didn't like the color of the stone, so I actually like darkened it a bit and re-imported it once again. And I think that definitely made wonders for the outside of the map here. It looks a lot nicer. Next, I grabbed some of those, those columns from the Fire and Ice Temple that you guys have seen before. Uh, and just laid them around where I wanted to. 
Then I realized there was a broken one. I forgot about that. So I delete the old one. Place some more rocks. Get that rock texture on it. Same with the outside mountain area. And this is just basically decorating. I just kind of go freelance with this. I just kind of do whatever I want. Um, change up the rocks. Change the scaling and move the X, Y, Z coordinates of the scale to make them look slightly different, even though I'm using the same exact model. Uh, next, I was thinking of getting rid of the arrows, but I thought I'd just keep the regular Rocket League, Rock League map the exact same. Uh, next, I grabbed the rubies or whatever you want to call these, like crystals. Changed the scale of them by three times on the Z, I believe, to make them more pointy. And this is just for the next like few seconds here, I just place them around. You can see I'm just kind of once again just going freelance with it. I don't really care how it looks like because I'm just trying to make it look natural and add a little bit more style to the outside because as far as the mountains go, yeah, they look cool and all. Like it looks like you're in the middle of like a volcano or something, but I thought I'd put a little bit more detail into the outside and make it look nicer when you're inside the map and looking out towards the mountains and stuff. So now I'm onto the blue one here, just placing a few more. I think after that, I don't remember what we move into. <laughs> like, honestly, my brain goes in different places all the time. So, um, hope you guys enjoy this video, though. I, I, I don't know if you guys like this kind of stuff. I mean, it goes into my brain, basically. This is, like, my brain working at 10 times speed. Uh, what am I doing here? Oh, I'm moving it all down because I wanted to make sure that the spawns would work. Uh, there's something weird about player spawns and how they have to be placed below 000 or like the zero plane on the, on the sea and as you can see i'm here playing minesweeper uh because my map is building i think it built pretty fast there it is and then i realized i need to switch to production lighting i recently just updated my udk to be an updated version uh, and here we're going to load the map in for the first time to try and test it out so that's what i do a lot on stream i usually do map building and then uh i go into like minesweeper or something i've done like some pretty silly minesweeper large tiles and tried to finish them so we loaded it up, noticed it was pretty nice. Uh, the sun was way too bright and way too low. Um, there's a lot of things like collision that you have to worry about. Uh, so I had to make sure that these have collision, which is what I just did here, I think. And then I realized I needed to move it down a little bit more to allow for the ball to spawn in properly. I'm, I try to make the ball spawn in and disappear it like I did on the, the, uh, the sumo map. So now I'm putting the spawns on top of the pillars and that way they actually like work on top of the pillars. I don't want collision on the lava. I want people to fall through it and die. <laughs> as morbid as that sounds. Now I'm just placing a few little obstacles and things you can jump on. So I add these like railings and then the platforms I never actually used in the Fire and Ice Temple. Uh, just to make it look a little different. I try to use different assets that I didn't actually use from the, the models pack that I bought for the Fire and Ice Temple. So here I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with these platforms. So I ended up actually mirroring it just because to make it fair. So you can see I just twisted them and then did a 180 turn. And then I add a few more platforms here. Next, I realize I can grab the torches and place them around the outside. So I place eight of them, four on each side. And the way that Rocket League works is you need to use the particle systems they have in the game. You can't really create anything. You need to reference stuff. So I end up going into another map in a second and grab the flames. Uh, here I'm grabbing, oh, I'm creating the fence texture. Which I think later actually breaks because the map did I mean, the pa package didn't save or something, so I had to redo that. But it's not a big deal; it doesn't take too long. Uh, here I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do, so I added another circular platform, copied it, and basically mirrored it to the other side. Uh, here I'm just trying to make sure they have a solid. Uh, you, have, you have to uncheck these three boxes. It's a little bit confusing. Uh, and then I basically did some level coding here. So it's not really code. It's not really object oriented programming, but it's something along the lines. So here I'm trying to make the ball disappear with this add game ball thing. It doesn't end up working a lot of the times. It's a little bit glitchy. So I found a backdoor kind of way to do that later. Uh, so here I'm getting the, the flame texture or particle system. I copied the torch over from that one and then rescaled it. Here I'm placing on each one of them. So I put it on each one of those. There we go. Nice and quick. What I do next? Oh, then I, I changed the textures of the platforms. Oh my god, that was so quickly. <laughs> it's already done. Uh, here I'm mirroring the spawns over the other side. So I made sure I have four. Here's where the RPG pack didn't save. I'm not sure why. Uh, so I had to reload the, the package and I lost some of the textures and stuff. Not a big deal. The map still saved. So all the, the player spawns and all that stuff still saved. Uh, so I quickly redid that. And here's where I think I create the platforms, is it? Yeah, so here I, I copy from my sumo map. You can see there in the background. I copy the mesh from the sumo map, basically, and I place it in the new package. And then here I'm rebuilding that platform that I had and making the size I want, rescaling it. And here's where I just make eight of them in a row. 
I think they were a little bit too small in the first place, so I ended up redoing that and then moving it over to the side so that way I could go lengthwise instead of on the side of the map behind. Uh, that way, so when you die, you can actually still spectate. Uh, so here I scale it up, and then I delete the platforms from behind. I probably could have scaled that uh, that floor platform. And here's my death run, by the way, that I haven't finished at all. But that was a quick little thing that I just used to find this gizmo mat thing, copy or whatever it's called. Uh, it's one of the textures that are inside the workshop textures. Uh, here I'm just texturing up the, the platforms. And then I wanted to make those ring pieces. I've made that platform, that cylinder, into four different pieces to make these rings like this. So I ended up putting it in a missive texture, which that what that does is it actually makes it glow a little bit. And then I just changed the uh, intensity of that to make it a little bit more interesting and, you know, add more flair to the, the models. Here what I'm doing is I'm making sure all of these have rigid body, which means they have collisions. So when you spawn up in this location on the, the, the cylinder, it uh, makes you collide with it. There I changed the color of the sun. And I think this is where I put all the, the path nodes. So these path nodes are things that tell the game where to place your car if you teleport. So here I'm in the sumo again, grabbing the trigger volumes and then copying over the code because it's basically the same game mode. Uh, and then all I need to do is reference all the path nodes to the right spots. Here I move it down even more so that way the ball actually disappears uh, in the game mode. And I'm moving the camera to the right spot. I asked chat if they thought this was a good spot to like look at the map. Then I go into the Glacial Rings map. I try to grab the fog from here. Uh, ended up, I don't know why it's invisible on that map, but then I just change it to an orange color that's like slightly intense, slightly not. I, I asked chat once again just what they thought would looked good. I thought this was a pretty nice color. I tried something something else, didn't really work out. Uh, ended up being pretty satisfied with that, that one here. Here I'm changing the detection box for the lava at the bottom to send you into those platforms if you fall off. So I copy the ball one and then make sure it doesn't actually interact with the level at all. Here I'm just replacing all of the path node uh, allocations with the code that I put from the sumo map. So once that was done, it's basically pretty much finished. Just to make sure that the floor doesn't have a uh, collision. I end up jumping in to the map and trying it out uh, once again, but I believe that there was a problem with the kill zone. So what I'm doing right now, as you can see on the screen, I'm actually replacing all of the the meshes and stuff that I referenced from other packages, I'm putting them into the package of the level. The reason why I do that is that I don't have to repackage everything uh, into my mods folder that I use to load the, the map. All I have to do is copy the one map right here. This is the mods folder. So I put the one map in there, copy it over, paste it, make sure I rename it into labs underscore underpass underscore P. And that way it, it convinces the game that I'm actually loading this map. And as you can see here, uh, it actually loads it up and I realized that the kill zone was too low. So I end up changing it to negative 12,000, which allows me to uh, exist in the map basically because the, the location of the map was uh, a little bit lower. There we go. Now I can load in and uh, I realized that some of the collision doesn't work. So I end up falling through that. So then I change uh, some of the, the collision on the posts here and the platforms. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, it basically loads up and I think it's ready to go. So guys, this is the final version of the map so far after the two hours of streaming it. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the time-lapse video. Uh, I've never really done this before on my channel, but I thought I'd give you guys some insight into how I make these maps. This is definitely one of the faster ones that I've created uh, just because it's a lot of pre-used uh, map assets that are from different things like my Fire and Ice Temple and stuff like that. Um, but I think it looks pretty good for what it was for how quickly I made it. Uh, I tried to keep it quite short just so the time-lapse isn't too long. Uh, I took it at 10 times speed, so about 1,000% a thousand, a thousand speed, but hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this is what it looks like when you get trapped, by the way. You get stuck in these little zones, uh, but it looks, looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Hope to see you guys in the next video. Until then, have a good one.